today we're in search of a tomb as you can probably tell by the fact that we're in a cemetery this is St Mary of Magdalene Church I believe the one we want is just around the corner Take a walk over here. This right here, if we take a look, sealed to the mem or sac sacred to the memory of Henry George Teasdale, Lieutenant General Royal Artillery. Born March 14th, 1799, died September 12th, 1871. Okay, if we have a quick look at this page right here, we can see that his name Henry George Teasdale, Lieutenant General, and he's the father of Christopher Charles Teasdale and Rose Louisa Longmore brackets Teasdale and on the next bit if we have a look we can see in this 1841 census of England district Royal artillery barracks Warwich dockyard Kent England on the section that I've highlighted in black Henry G all the way down to George is the Teasdale family from age 40 to age 2 and the fourth and fifth one is Christopher at the age of eight and Rose at the age of six. Also of Major General Sir Christopher Charles Teasdale, Royal Artillery, Victoria Cross, uh, KM, KCMG, CB, Born 1st of June 1833, died 1st of November 1893. And on this side, sorry, also to the memory of Rose Budd, widow of Lieutenant General H.G. Teasdale, born 27 February 1799. Died 30th of December 1882. I don't think it says anything on that side. But this is a a veteran, you could call him, the first South African-born recipient of the Victorian Cross. Or Victoria Cross, sorry. Very well respected man. Thank you for your service. On this Wikipedia page, we can see that Teasdale was 22 years old and a lieutenant in the Royal Regiment of Artillery in the British Army during the Crimean War when the following deed took place, for which he was awarded the Victoria Cross. On the 29th of September in 1855 at Carl's Turkey, Lieutenant Teasdale volunteered to take command of the force engaged in the defence of the most advanced part of the works. He threw himself into the mist, into the midst, into the mist, the midst of the enemy, and encouraged the garrison to make an attack so vigorous that the Russians were driven out. During the hottest part of the action, he induced the Turkish artillerymen to return to their post from which they had been driven by enemy fire. 
and after the final victorious charge and after the final victorious charge he saved from the fury of the Turks a considerable number of enemy wounded an action gratefully acknowledged by the Russian staff I'm sorry for my reading skills but it's kind of hard to read this on the screen at the moment Teasdale was wounded at the Battle of Kars taken prisoner and held, Rus and held in Russia until he was released in 1856 he was awarded the Legion Dijonneur I'm not sure what that says and made an honourable CB in the same year a talented watercolourist he was responsible for illustrations in the book of in the book on Battle of Cars by Humphrey Sandwich Humphrey Sandwich I'm not sure the regiment's doctor at Cars the illustrators were possibly done while Teasdale was in captivity he was decorated with the VC by Queen Victoria in the quadrangle of Windsor Castle on the 21st of November 1857 along with James, George and Joseph and if we look up near this little box area we can see his allegiance was with the United Kingdom service British Army his years of service were 29th of May 48 to the 22nd of April 92 he was a major general in the Royal Artillery we can also see the wars he was in which was the Crimean War a military conflict fought from October 30, 1853 to February 1856 in which Russia lost an allegiance made up of the Ottoman Empire, the United Kingdom, Sardinia and France. The immediate cause of the war involved the rights of Christian minorities in the Holy Land. Also the Second Anglo-Chinese War the Second Opium War, also known as the Second Anglo-Chinese War, the Second Chinese War, the Arrow War, and the Anglo-French Expedition to China, was a war pitting the British Empire and the French Empire against Qing, Qing or Qing Dynasty of China that lasted from 1856 to 1860. I'm sorry for butchering that. The Maha Mad the Maddest War was a war of the late 19th century between the Maddest Sadanis of the religious leader Muhammad Ahmed bin I'm not going to try and pronounce that because I don't want to be offensive who had proclaimed himself the Mahdi of Islam and the forces of the Kiev, the Red of Egypt. I am so sorry for butchering all of this. And later, the forces of Britain. Eighteen years of war resulted. And the 1882 Anglo-Egyptian War, the British conquest of Egypt, also known as the Anglo-Egyptian War occurred in 1882 between Egyptian and Sudanese forces under Ahmed Arabia and Great Britain it ended a nationalist uprising against the I have no idea I'm sorry but then if we take a look at his awards you got the Victoria Cross the highest and most prestigious award of British honours um, the Knights Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, Companion, uh, Companion 
of the order of Bath. Legion Dionier, I'm so sorry for mispronouncing these, and Order of Medici, or Med Medici. I can't pronounce some of these words. And just two across from him is Sir Richard Hotham, founder of Bogner, who died March 14th, 1799, in his 77th year. His mortal remains were in, entered in South Burstead Church, but on its restoration in 1879, were re-entered in this vault. If we take a little look, you've got a big um, tomb over there. So we just walk between these. You've got a big tomb here. I'm not sure how that. I'll have to come back in the daytime when it's sunny so I can read it. But a lot of people buried here that deserved better. If we look here, you've got Charles Pritchard. Died December 22nd, 1862 aged 41 years I think that says and also Albert Edward uh, it's kind of hard to see the rest of that over there I'm sorry if I'm walking on any unmarked graves but if we take a look at this one I don't know if we'll be able to see the writing at the moment because it's kind of dark and yeah I can't really work out what that says but it sort of looks like a building in a crucifix formation here you've got someone as well but that has been here for a while because it's very worn off There's a lot of tombs, and I know you've got the, you obviously got the tombstones, but I'm on about a lot of the above ground memorials. Some of them are very broken up, unfortunately. Which kind of scary to an extent when you think of it, because it should be resting place, but you've got a really big tree there, which is hard to see. I'll have to come back another time with when the sun lights out so that we can see more. Here you've got another big plate, or not plate, a slate, which I also can't really see at the moment. Francis, I think that's Francis something Smith. But yes, you've got church over there. That's mainly what I wanted to show you was the one who got in the Victorian or Victoria Cross. So that's a very good achievement. But the thing that's more historically thing is the fact that he was the first South African born recipient of the victory, 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 no, Victoria Cross. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But yes, that's just a quick little trip to say respect to 
that gentleman. I'll see you maybe when the song comes out. Goodbye for now. We've also got the church hall and the old school baby's house. And over that way you've got another section of it. I'm not sure the age of this building. Assuming it's going to be relatively close to the same as that or a bit similar because it says up there. Or no, it just says that's just um, writing that I can't read. Yeah, you've got a little church bell up there. So, bye bye for now.